Hello everyone, it's Dr. Ryan coming to you again from my office with another video review of a step one question sent in by a student. So let's jump right into it. So the question says, a 56 year old man with pancreatic cancer comes to the emergency department because of worsening dyspnea for a week. His physician orders a D-dimer to rule out pulmonary embolism. The physician recently read an article that documented the negative predictive value of serum D-dimer concentration below an age adjusted cutoff value in oncological patients as 98%, and the positive predictive value for levels above the cutoff value as 24%. The test also had a sensitivity of 99% and a specificity of 17% for detecting PE in oncology patients. Based on this information, what is the probability that this patient has a PE if the D-dimer measurement is below the age-adjusted cutoff value? And they give us five numbers here for answer choices. All right, so basically, this is a really straightforward question about negative predictive value, but it's hidden behind some super confusing, dense language designed to get you lost so that you can't answer a very straightforward question. So let's take a look at the question stem. So the physician orders a D-dimer to rule out pulmonary embolism. Okay, fine. Then they give you the world's most confusing sentence. The physician recently read an article that documented the negative predictive value of serum D-dimer concentration below an age-adjusted cutoff value in oncological patients as 98%. My goodness, what a crazy sentence. That sentence simply says the negative predictive value is 98%. That's all it's saying. The rest of the words are pretty much nonsense designed to just confuse you. They're saying there's an age-adjusted cutoff value, but that's not important to the question. What an age-adjusted cutoff value means is imagine that values for D-dimer could range from zero to 100. I'm just making these numbers up. And imagine that they said for patients under 20 years old, the cutoff for PE is 50, meaning values above 50 suggest PE and values below 50 suggest no PE. But that's only for patients under 20. For patients over 20, there's a different cutoff. It's 75. That's what an age-adjusted cutoff is. But it's irrelevant because we're going to apply it to this 56-year-old man. So we don't need to know about the age-adjusted cutoff value or worry about that. Basically, for this third sentence here, we can cross off all this language right here and just read the negative predictive value of D-dimer is 98%. That's all you need to know. Everything else in that sentence is irrelevant. They're just throwing words in to confuse you. And once you know the negative predictive value, you can answer this question. It's asking you, what's the probability the patient has a PE if the D-dimer measurement is below the age-adjusted cutoff value? And that's going to be based on the negative predictive value. So to explain this clearly, let's remind ourselves of the two by two tables we use when we're talking about sensitivity, specificity, and positive and negative predictive value. So in a two by two table, you have a test and the result can either be positive or negative. So in our case, the test is a D-dimer and the result can be either above the cutoff, which is positive or below, which is negative. And then along the top, you have the gold standard. So if we had some gold standard for diagnosing PE, we would have patients who either have PE by the gold standard or patients who do not. Once we set up this table, up here we've got true positives. These are patients who are positive by the screening test and positive by the gold standard. Down here, we have true negatives. Up here, we have false positives. These are patients who screen positive, but they don't have the condition by the gold standard. And down here, we have the false negatives. Well, the negative predictive value is simply saying of all the people who test negative, what percentage of them are true negatives? So it's going to be the true negatives divided by everything down here, all the people who test negative, okay? It's gonna be the false negatives plus the true negatives. Sorry for my sloppy handwriting here. So they tell us that this is 98%. So basically, of all the people who test negative, 98% are truly negative for PE. But that's not what they want. They say of all the people who test negative, what percent actually do have PE? So that's gonna be 100 minus 98 or two. So going back to the question, they wanna know the probability that this patient has a PE if the D-dimer measurement is below the age-adjusted cutoff value. And remember, this age-adjusted cutoff value is just nonsense to confuse you. They're just saying, what's the likelihood the patient has a PE if they screen negative based on the D-dimer measurement? And that's going to be 2%. So the bottom line here is that this is a pretty straightforward question about negative predictive value. It's just confusing because of the way they word it. That sentence which gives you the negative predictive value is super confusing. Then they also tell you the sensitivity and specificity, but those aren't relevant to this. Whenever they're asking you about a screening test on an actual population of patients and saying, if we use it, 
in this group of patients, what's the likelihood the patient is truly positive or truly negative? They're talking about negative and positive predictive values. The sensitivity and specificity have to do with the gold standard. If they say we have a gold standard for PE and 10% of people with the gold standard have a positive result, they're giving you numbers there that you can plug into that two by two table to calculate sensitivity and specificity, but none of that is relevant here. They're simply asking you, when the patient tests negative, what does that mean? And when they say that, you're gonna go right to the negative predictive value. If they say, what does it mean in terms of the likelihood that the patient doesn't have the condition? That answer is the negative predictive value. If they say, what's the likelihood the patient does have the condition when they test negative? Then that's one minus the negative predictive value. Straightforward stuff here, but confusing language. So what are the take homes from this? First of all, don't get confused by language. Practice reading dense paragraphs, either in board questions, in textbooks, in journal articles. The more you can read this stuff and translate it into simple, easy to understand terms that you understand, the easier the boards will be for you. And then secondly, make sure you go into your step one exam and even your step two and step three exam, knowing the basics about how to use negative and positive predictive value and sensitivity and specificity in questions like this. And that concludes today's step one question review.